In this tutorial, we're going to go through a few new skills. We're going to revolve to create a circular part. We're going to use a circular pattern to put features in that circular part. We're going to review constraints while we're going through that. We're going to play with different viewing styles so we can see hidden features. And then we're going to be using the origin axes and planes to help us measure and design and create sketches. Let's go with a new, pro new part. So I'm going to be in the metric template. And I'm going to go with standard IPT, standard millimeters. Let's create that. Once again, we always start with a new sketch. I'm going to pick the XY plane, mostly out of habit. Now this is going to be a circular part. So the first thing I'm actually going to draw is I'm going to draw a line straight up and down here on this axis. Now that's not actually my part, but it is what where the center is, or the center rotation is. I'm actually going to do a lot of measuring from that line. All right, let's draw the rough shape of our part. We're essentially going to be drawing kind of an H. I'm making sure to keep 90 degree angles and parallel lines. I'm not terribly concerned about the exact dimensions right now. You could type them in as you go. Notice how I'm keeping that line lined up perfectly with the corner below it. Same here again, looking for that line to pop up so it lines up perfectly. It just saves me some hassle later on. There's my basic part, my shape. Now I'm going to set a couple of constraints to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to use a horizontal constraint. I'm going to go from the center point, my center point right there. See how that little dot pops up? I'm going to make sure that center point is constrained at the center of those axes. Now that means that that line will always be centered on this axis. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Slide it up until I see that dot. There's that dot. Line it up at the center point right there. Bang! I am centered. Okay, let's put a few more dimensions in here. First dimension I want, this, should be 65 millimeters. Perfect. Oh, that's too big. There we go. This one, I want it to be 35 millimeters. Good. This, I want to be 25 millimeters. This one, I also want to be 25 millimeters. So instead of typing 25, I'm just going to click on that number right there. Should make it match perfectly. I'm going to double check because this centerpiece, I'm expecting 15 millimeters. So I'm going to Create a dimension and check. Yep, it says 15 millimeters. Now remember, when I click on this, it yells at me and says, hey, it's going to over constrain the, the sketch. It wants me to create a driven dimension. If I hit accept, once again, it's got those brackets around it. I can't change that dimension. However, if I change any of the other numbers, say to a 24, this one automatically changes that one. And then this number in the middle is going to keep changing according to what we see there. Let's undo that because I don't need that 17 there. That was just a double check for me. I just undid that. All right, let's uh, do a couple more things. This is a rotary part. In fact, our plans are listed mostly in terms of diameter or radius. So what that means, I'm going to do most of my dimensions from this center line. So our center hole should have a radius of 20. So that distance right there is going to be 20. All right, now you see what happened there is our center line moved off, off, the, uh, off the axis. I don't really want that. I'm gonna take a vertical constraint, center line of that onto the axis. Good, now it's stuck there. If I change any of these other numbers, all this other stuff is going to move, not this center line. Let's keep on dimensioning. I wanna dimension this compared to the outside line. Yeah, let's pull it down here. That should have a diameter of 90, so it's going to be a radius of half of that, which is 45. I'm going to keep dimensioning all of these edges. Let's do the outside edge first. Outside edge clicked, dimension to the center line. According to my diagram, that's got a diameter of 280 millimeters, so let's do 140 millimeters. One more dimension I need, I need this edge 
to my center line. I'm just going to bring it up here out of the way. That should have a diameter of 230 millimeters, so half of that is 115 millimeters. That looks like the part I need. Let's finish that sketch. So now I've got a shape, and what I'm actually going to do is I am going to use this revolve command. You spin this around in a circle, and we're going to get our shape. When you are creating round parts, it is much easier to draw the profile and then revolve it around an axis. So watch when we do this. I'm going to click the revolve command. Now it automatically has picked the last profile I was working on. In red here it says, hey, select your axis. So I'm going to click on that. There's my axis right there. And when I click on that, I actually get my part. If you look at this, you can see how there is my profile. And as I spin it around in a circle, that's the shape that it makes. The fastest way to make it. You can make it with a bunch of cylinders, extrude and cut. That will work. But this revolve is much faster. Hit OK. So there's the basis of my part. We're going to do some more work to this, yeah. The next thing I want to do is I want to cut some teeth in the edge. Okay, I want two, two grooves along in the edge here. So I'm going to need to start a sketch. Let's start a sketch. I want to cut into this edge right here. That's exactly where I want to start my sketch. So I don't really have a plane to work on. So I'm going to click on origin here. I'm going to move my cursor down until I've got a plane that cuts through the center. Now this XY plane would work. So would this YZ plane. I'm going to use the YZ plane. That cuts me, moves me directly to the side. And before I do anything else, I want to project the edge of this shape. So see how just that little line lights up there? I don't want the whole thing. I just want this little line to pop in there. Now that line is in my, in my sketch. But if I go to try and draw on that line, this whole part is in the way. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to right click on solid one, and I'm going to change the visibility so it's not checked anymore. Notice how the icon here changes. The shape is still there. It's just hiding from us. The visibility is turned off. And that's okay because it was in my way. I'm going to do all my work on this edge. That's why I projected the edge first so I know where it is. So from those edges, I'm going to roughly create line, line, line. And make sure it actually pops up on there. Do the same thing down here. Like that. All right, let's put some dimensions in there. Let's continue to dimension this until we've got the profile we need. I'm going to go from this edge to this edge, and I'm going to make that three millimeters. All right, those teeth don't look at all like I want them yet, but a couple more things. We'll use a collinear constraint between this line and that line. Oh, must already be there. I'll hit cancel. To dimension the angle, I'm going to click on this line and that line. Pull it out till dimension is an easy to place C place. I'm going to call that I want 60 degrees. Okay, good. Well, before we go any further, I think I should say that I want this edge to that edge to be six millimeters. Perfect. Let's finish off the rest of those angles. They're all going to be 60 degrees. So I can actually just keep clicking on that first 60, and I should get exactly 60 each time. From there, to there. Instead, I want a 60 degree angle. And from there to there. Oh, it already is 60 degrees. Perfect. I've got all my angles dimensioned, and I've got most of my sides dimensioned. But if you have a, a good eye, if you look around, you'll realize this top piece is a little wider than the bottom piece. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have to make them the same. So I'm going to dimension 
take the dimension command, go from this point up to that point, and I want that to be 12 millimeters. I'm going to check, and if I'm right, this is also 12 millimeters. Perfect. Now, I don't want to bother with a, di a driven dimension, but I wanted to see what it was going to be. Yes, now they're both 12 millimeters. I can finish that sketch. Now my drawing is missing because I made it, I turned off the visibility. I'm going to go back here up to the browser window. You can see when I hover over it, you can see the pattern there. I'm going to right click, turn the visibility back on. And now let's cut out those grooves around the edge. So I'm going to revolve again. Profiles. Really hard to grab those profiles when they're hiding, aren't it? Isn't it? So let's cancel out of that. I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to go over to View, and I'm going to change this visual style. I want wireframe, model edges only. When I click on that, all I get is this wireframe edges. Now I don't like designing in this window, but it does allow me to see parts inside others. And I'm going to change it back here in a couple of minutes. But for now, I need to be able to see everything. So I've got that view. I'm going to go back to 3D Model tab. And I'm going to revolve one more time. Profiles. Now I can see that sketch. Let's move this over here so I can see it better. I'm going to make sure I've got that profile selected. And that profile selected. Good. And the axis I want, and normally you can pick one of these edges, but instead I'm just going to go over here. Yeah, that Y axis is the one I want. See how it shows up, not the Z. See how the Y axis shows up in the center? If I click on that, and I hit OK. Oh, right now I've got it as a join command. I want to cut those out. I'm going to change it to a cut. You get a little bit of a preview, even though it's hard to see on this. I'm going to hit OK. Let's bring it back here into the center. That's hard to view, so I've got to go change my view back. So view, visual style, shaded with edges is what we were looking at. We've got our grooves in there for a belt. A couple more details to put in. Let's put some cutouts in here like a real pulley would have. So I'm going to start a new sketch. I'm going to go back to the 3D model. I'm going to start a new sketch. And let's do it right on this face right here. On a flat face like that. Perfect. I'm going to project geometry so I've got some edges to work with. I'm going to click on this center piece because I want both this edge and that edge projected into my sketch. Click that in. I want to offset some parts. So I'm going to click this offset, I'm going to click that, drag it down, and I want to offset it 5 millimeters. Not a lot, just a little bit. And on the other side, I'm going to offset this one as well. I want to offset this one, I'm going to bring it out 10 millimeters. Okay, I've got two edges, I'm going to use parts of this to draw our next part. Alright, I'm going to grab a line. And from the center, I'm just going to go out here, and I want to keep it flat and on that axis. That one's actually going to be more of a guideline than an actual line we're going to use. I'm going to go back from the center. I'm going to go up above it. As long as you go all the way to that edge, it's good. And I'm going to do the same thing down below. Notice how when it snaps to that edge, it gives me that little symbol saying it's going all the way to the line. That's roughly where I want them. Let's dimension it and get it exactly where I want it. So I'm going to take a dimension and I'm going to put an angular dimension. So from the center line up, I want a grand total of 15 degrees. I want the bottom one to be the same. So from there to the center line, click on that. And I'm just going to click on the 15 so that they're automatically the same. Finish that sketch. Let's extrude that cutout. Extrude. Now this time it didn't catch the profiles I wanted automatically, so I have to click them myself. Be careful when you're clicking. 
be careful what sh uh, shows up green. I want that one, and I want that one. Don't grab these little pieces in here or that piece out there. And I don't want it to pop out as a feature. I want it to cut. So I'm going to cut, and I want it to go all the way through. So I'm going to click the all the way through button. That looks about right. Hit OK. And now I've got a hole for one of my spokes. Okay, let's pretty that up a little bit. Let's put some fillets in the corners. I'm going to click on the fillet. I am looking for a 10 millimeter fillet, so I'm going to change this radius up here to 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to click on each of these inside edges. Care if we don't click on there. That's not what I want. I want to click this edge. And I want to get to these other edges too. Now sometimes you can see them from here, but other times like that one, it's just too, too hard to find. So I'm going to click on this box up here. And I'm going to drag it around until I can see the edges I need. Zoom in if you need to. I want that one, and I still haven't got that edge right there. Keep rotating. Oh, there it is. Click on that. Yeah, that's the edges I want. Click Apply. I'm done. Go back to the Home view. And I'm going to keep clicking this until I get a good view of that. Yeah, that's what I like. So let's take this feature and we're going to rotate it around. And we're going to use what's called a circular pattern. It allows us to take one feature and copy it around. In fact, multiple features. So if I want to take this piece and I want to copy it in a circle around, you have to be careful how you select it. So if I click right here, the only thing I've selected are the fillets. And if I try to pattern those fillets around, when they get to the other edges, they're going to be confused because there's no hole or corner to fill it, and it's going to give me an error. If I click on this piece right here, it actually doesn't select the fillets. It only selects my original extrusion, and I have to go in and add the fillets afterwards. What I actually have to do is I'm going to click that feature there. That's that outside shape, and you can see it turned up blue there. I also want to bring those fillets in, so I'm going to click on the fillets. I have two features selected now. I've got the original extrusion plus the fillets. That's perfect. Next step, rotational axis. Now I can pick that Y axis, or I can also just pick one of these edges. This is going to be centered in there around that edge. I could, any of these outside edges will work. I click on that. You'll notice it gives me a preview of how many I want. I am looking for six of them. That's what I've got in my design. I can just hit OK. Now I've got those spokes in and those cutouts. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cut a little keyhole in here just to keep it on a shaft. Let's create another sketch. Click on that. Okay, let's create a rectangle. Let's zoom in. It's going to be over here. So I created it right about there. Let's use our constraints again to put it exactly where we want it. I'm going to take a vertical constraint, and I'm going to take that center point. It's pretty close to centered, but it's not exactly there. And I want to center it with the center of my axes. That's why I started right off the bat by centering my part on my axes, because now all the way through, if I need something in the middle, I can always go to those axes because they're always there. I'm going to take a horizontal constraint, constrain that up to here. Last couple of steps, I'm going to dimension that rectangle. I want the top, I want that width to be 10, and I want that height to be 25 millimeters. There. Now that'll cut out that little keyway. Finish my sketch. I'm going to extrude it out. Once again, I do not want it to extrude it up as a new part. I want to cut. I don't want to go part way. I want to go all the way through. Hit OK. Here. That is my rotary part.